Yo, what's going on? It's your boy Joe Alvarez. Today I just want to do a quick dirty video on how to find the BPM and the tune, aka key of your acapellas that you want to remix. If you want to remix and get into it, these are essential steps you need to know to first lock in the BPM and the key of any acapella in order to make a successful remix. So let's get into it. Without any surprises here, the fastest and easiest way nowadays to find the BPM and the key is google.com. I use this 99% of the time when I trying to first initiate a remix, especially if I'm not particularly working with the artist. So the quickest way to do it, say you want to find Charlie Poof's attention, uh, BPM and key, is just Google it. You Google it, bam, and a whole bunch of options come up, a whole bunch of th uh, different sites, in particular with the popular artists, will come up and show you exactly what you need to know. So in this case, I actually use Tune Bait a lot. It will show you the key, the duration, the harmonic mixing uh, key, which is 2A, and it'll show you the BPM. Bam. And that to me is the quickest and most dirtiest way to find an acapella BPM and tune and key. I use this way about 99% of the time. Okay, let's say you're using an acapella from a less known artist who doesn't um, show up in the EDM top 40 categories all over the internet. How are you gonna find that BPM? How are you gonna find that key? So here are a couple ways I do it when I'm working with less known artists or regional artists from different parts of the world. This is how I uh, find the BPM and the key in order to get my remixes going. So recently I hooked up with this dope artist named Fubi from Africa, but I didn't have the BPM and the key to the acapella that I was working on. So this is the way that I figured that out. Check it out. So in this particular case, I'm gonna fire up Logic. I'm gonna drag and drop this bad boy right here. I'm gonna pretend I don't know the BPM. I already did a remix to this. If you wanna do it, if you wanna check it out, hit me up at DJ J Hooks on my SoundCloud. I have a full remix to this song. The quickest way to try to figure this out is you come over here and you go down to metering and BPM counter. And then you just let it play and it's going to analyze the acapella and try to figure out the BPM counter. I'm not going to lie. I don't have the best of luck using this technique. I find that with acapellas, unless it's like super rhythmic, it's going to have a hard time trying to figure out the percussive elements to give you a, a precise BPM measurement. So let's check it out. Mushoe wanto e sadaka do uje uniyokote nisiwe mungu sio kwamba silagi nakula nikikukumbuka ndo na achana sio kwamba silali lalala ila picha ya kompa katapotoka sio kwamba silagi nikikukumbuka ndo na achana sio kwamba silali ndo kama hivi nikitoka as you can see it's struggling to find the bpm <clears throat> That's been about 20 plus seconds and it still can't find it. So sometimes this way works, sometimes it doesn't. In this particular case, I'm going to try to do this by ear. So what I mean by that is I'm going to try to adjust it to the tempo that I think it is. So if I just go come up here, hit the metronome, it sounds like it's in about the 80 to 90 range. So I'm going to just say put it on 85 for now and try to figure it out there. I can hear it's a little slow. I'm going to speed it up a little bit. Mushoe wanto e sadaka do uje uniyokote Nisiwe mongo sio kwamba silagi nakula Nikikukumbuka ndo na achana sio kwamba silali Lalala ila picha ya kompa katapote So that sounds like it's about 91 
Let's see if the BPM counter showed up. Never did. It just can't figure out um, the BPM content, mainly because this particular acapella is very harmonic bass, and he's doing a lot of singing and a lot of legato drag, so it's almost impossible to try to figure that out that way. So another way of doing it, um, which sometimes I use, but lately I haven't been using as much, is let's say I'm going to just drag. I'm going to come over here first, actually, go to Tempo. And then you want to go on the Smart Tempo and Project Settings. You want to come under here and mess with the Flex and Follow Region Settings. And what this is going to do is going to allow you to just drag and drop um, different sounds directly into the timeline here. And it's automatically going to analyze it and figure out uh, the tempo and everything and put all the, the BPM points in here. And so when, I'll just delete this one. So when you come over here. No matter what you do now, if, say if I, even if I don't know the tempo from the beginning, if I drag and drop, as long as I have the tempo, uh, the smart tempo, Feature armed. If I say set this tempo to 125, it's gonna keep the tempo match the. It's gonna automatically match the um the tempo without changing the pitch to this wave uh form. So. It's kind of like what Ableton does. I think Ableton just does it a little better, but Logic is now having that capability to just follow um, the tempo of any particular waveform that you put in. So now if I go ahead and put, like, say, a drum loop in here, it will automatically um, adjust it to 125 beats per minute. So that's one way of doing it, which is very similar to if I was just a drag and drop without doing the smart tempo and just, if I come up here, um, to the hide and show flex, which is uh, command F, and mess with the different flex times. It's basically that feature is just automatically doing it for you under here. Uh, I don't use this method as much. I always try to figure out the BPM manually, just because sometimes if the rhythms in the acapella are kind of going back and forth in this particular case, um, this artist, he's using different cadence and different rhythms. Sometimes it's hard to uh, keep track of the BPM consistently. And so I figured, I, I find that coming into these waveforms and, and trying to play with these handles, sometimes it's just cumbersome. And to me, it's not the best workflow, especially when you get a remix and you're like 90, not 90, maybe like 60 to 70% done. I just find it hard to try to readjust this. Um, this particular method. So I don't use this method as much. So one of the ways that I use um, logic to find the BPM once, actually once one of the ways I use to manipulate the BPM once I know the BPM of the acapella is this way. So I started a new project, make sure that Smart Temple and this region here is not active. Um, you don't, you want that to be turned off. So you don't want auto flex and I'm gonna just drag and drop this acapella back into my timeline. Bam, in this particular case, I know that the BPM for this acapella is 91. So I'm gonna adjust it, just listen to it real quick. Cool, just double click on that, come down here to file, you want to go to function, time, and pitch. It's going to be your best friend. Now, this bad boy looks super archaic. It looks like something out of 1998. But I find that this is the best way to try to keep my uh, my BPMs for my acapella in perfect um, alignment throughout the whole uh, entirety of the track. So what you want to do is come down here to original. If it's 91, you hit 91. And the destination of the BPM, I like to do my remixes in about 122 to 124 BPMs. So I just hit 124. It's going to tell you that it's 36% uh, stretching the original. So that's the destination. Sometimes that's going to be too much. Other times it's going to work just fine. It really just depends on the acapella content.
So I want to just process and paste. It's going to take a second. Still going, still going. Bam. Cool. So I went up to, so now what I got to do is I got to readjust the, the uh, BPM up here. So it's 124. <laughs> So in this particular case, that sounds super fast, but it kept it in BPM. Sometimes it's going to be usable, sometimes it's not. Okay, so the last way to try to find the BPM and the key of your acapella is what has quickly become one of my favorite ways to do it is, you guessed it, Serato Sample. This bad boy's algorithm is super sleek, super fast, and just whatever they're doing there at Serato with their pitch and tune and BPM, algorithms is just amazing so again i just fired up serato sample i'm going to drag and drop my acapella to the load audio file and it's automatically automatically find the key and it's going to automatically adjust to whatever tempo i have the whole set to if i have this press other sync in this case i believe it at 124 and just for shits and giggles i'm going to turn off sync and it's going to automatically tell me um, the BPM of the original acapella, which is 90.67. So that's leaning more toward the side of 91 beats per minute. So our first guess was pretty accurate. It was around 91 beats per minute. I'm going to turn sync back on. And this way I've been loving doing my remixes lately because it gives me just a lot of flexibility and a lot of little dirty ways to play um, with just the effects when I have a remix set. So in this case, I'm gonna just test it out. It's a little off, so I'm gonna zoom in. Here. I catch it over here more. Dang, thunderstorm and bad out there. You guys hear that? Yeah. Alright, so just turn this back on. Cool. So I just press Shift R just to record what I did. Um, it automatically record the last uh, keystroke that I did. So in this particular case, I'll just hear it back to make sure that it's on. So it's on. And the, the cool, really cool thing about, I like this method, and I'll show you another, uh, I, I'll advance this tip a little further in two seconds just to show you how to make it more usable. Because you might be thinking, well, that's technically a MIDI note, so I can't really just play from the, say, the, the middle of the song. Because nothing's going to play, but I'll show you that in two seconds, how to um, address that. The cool thing about this is that I like, you can change the key on the fly. So say you start playing it. That's pretty cool because you, say you lay it down originally and then you want to just harmonize the vocals even further. You could put it down um, minus seven uh, semitones, up seven, uh, seven semitones, try to do a little harmonic 
like trickery there, if you may. But let's say you want to just keep that as is. And in my particular case, when I'm working on a remix, I don't really want to work on a MIDI uh, track when I'm working with vocals because I want to be able to hit any bar and hear that vocal. So what you do is you highlight the region, bounce in place. You want to make sure that you turn off normalization. And let's say we'll name this verse 1. Boom, and I have verse 1 right there. And if I needed to adjust it, say if it was a little off, like here, if, if I want to adjust it, it's kind of cumbersome on the MIDI note because you just you can't hear it from the middle of the waveform. But here I can. Say I just wanted to back that up a little bit or make it push it forward. So you see it, it's there. And what I would do for verse two, I usually like to keep this in place. So I'll just command D uh, and it'll duplicate the Serato sample. And let's say verse two starts say over here somewhere. I'll just select all and start a new key point. So you just come here and record it. That's a little off. Start it on a more definitive spot. Let's say that was the beginning. Let's say right there. Boom, say that would be your verse two. Do the same thing, bounce in place, name it verse two. Cool. And there you have it. That's super cool to do. I particularly lately been liking this method because let's say. I'll just erase this for now just to make it easier. But let's say I was working on a remix, like an EDM type version of this song, and I wanted to just play with the entry of the C part, right? So I already have. It's a little off. I already, I already have that, um, that trigger, that cue point. I'll just move it here. And let's say I'll just drag it here. If I want to lead up to that by doing like a quick little trigger effect, like you get the drift. You can do a whole bunch of crazy little things. Say, I'll just take off a little bit of the top, put a stereo delay on that. You get where I'm going with this. You can just keep doing this and just do a whole bunch of vocal chops and play with the verses. And this is why I like this method. This is probably my second best method. Um, and compared to use, say, like the time machine, which is my first best method. So just play with it, see what you think. Let me know. Holla at me. Leave a comment, subscribe, hit me up. If you want to see me do a full remix from start to end, let me know. I'll definitely do that because lately I've been on a remix kick. You can check my remixes out at DJ J Hooks, J H O O O K S, at SoundCloud.com. I've been posting all my remixes there lately. I really appreciate you. Peace.